Good journalists, in my view, are storytellers. It doesn't matter very much whether we tell our stories in the paper, online, in a Twitter feed, or in some new gizmo that's still a glint in the developer's eye. To my mind, what makes what we do special is our ability to tell a story in a compelling way to people who need to know about it. I'd like to give you two very quick examples of stories that I think matter. I've picked these two from the Herald Sun, which I hope you'll forgive me for, but to be fair, I could have picked them from any of the news organisations represented on this panel or in this room tonight, are both big and small. The first of my stories that matters is one written by Andrew Rule about six months ago. It was a story of selfless devotion about the sort of love that is rare in, a tr in the troubled world that we live in today. It was the story of Linny Rowe, who was born nearly 50 years ago in suburban Melbourne without arms or legs after her mother was given the drug thalidomide. The Rowe family suffered an extraordinary medical misfortune, but they didn't do what so many of us do when that type of tragedy happens. They didn't get angry with the drug company or the doctor or the world in general. When the doctor told them their daughter had no arms or legs, they simply replied that they'd have to make sure that they looked after her very carefully. And they did just that for nearly 50 years. They loved Linny for the great person that she is and got on with living life as best they could. I count that as a story that matters. And the Herald Sun continues to cover the Rowe family's legal battle for compensation from the German manufacturers of the drug. Um, the second story that matters was an investigation by Bruce Lampert into cancer cases among CFA staff and volunteers that worked at the CFA training centre at Fiskville in country Victoria. That story, which we ran across page one and four pages inside, was the result of a painstaking and careful investigation into the significant number of cancer cases among people who had handled chemicals in the 70s and 80s at the site. These were people who loved the CFA, and could never imagine ever saying anything against the CFA. They were very reluctant to uh, come forward publicly and criticise the CFA for lack of action on their health concerns. What happened at Fiskville, in my view, is an important story. It would have been important 40 years ago. It will be important in another 40 years. People have died. Others are seriously ill, and no one knows whether they or, they ch or their children need to be regularly checked for cancer or other serious illnesses. I believe that how the government responds to our investigation and whether it takes action actually will give us some clues to the sort of society that we really live in. These stories represent, I think, very much the sort of journalism that will keep us relevant and valued in a very fast-changing world. To have more of that in Australia's media, I think, is our biggest opportunity. And that brings me to my view of what I think the biggest threat is. And that is that the biggest threat, I think, is that we don't hold on to our nerve about doing journalism that matters. We have to remain committed to the sort of storytelling that we do well and understand that while our way of communicating with our readers is changing and changing very quickly, um, that's most things about what makes a good story haven't actually changed very much at all. It's a huge challenge, but something that I believe we can do and do well if we never forget why we all fell in love with this great profession all those years ago. We need to do exactly what Harry Gordon and Seth and Graham Perkin talked so eloquently about all those years ago. We need to shine light in dark places. We need to find out things that PR people don't want us to expose we need to hold governments to account. And I think if we never lose <coughs> sight of what makes us special about doing this, that, I'm confident we'll still have a great future in doing terrific journalism, journalism that matters for the next 40 years. Thank you. Thank you, Jill.